We're talking about Paul Haber. And, yes, you know, yes. What you I wanted to get into that. Yeah. Uh, now, I've found that people that I know and that I hang around with, they don't remember Paul Haber. They give me a blank look. Paul Haber, maybe we had, some of us had to be sort of sick in our own right that we remember Paul Haber. Not many people do. And he was, what we thought, he was a national figure. Well, he was. There was a big article in Sports Illustrated Correct. about him. Yes. But yep. tell us about Paul. In New York Times. I mean, he, he drew articles in the New York Times. Yes. Yeah, Paul Haber was, he just, there was a book that just came out on him called Un, Undiagnosed, yeah. uh, Unscrupulous, uh -huh. and Unbeatable. And that's, whoever put that title together nailed it. Yes. Because at the time, nobody knew that this guy was a, a bipolar, a manic depressive. Yeah. Uh, he was badly abused as a kid, which contributed to a lot of what made him unscrupulous. Mm -hmm. He just was, uh, uh, he lived a hard life, fast life. He drank, he smoked, he did whatever he wanted. Chased women like Chased a Chased women. Uh, it was unbelievable. I mean, if, if you invited Paul Haber to town to play handball, uh, it was like inviting a pro professional, right? Mm -hmm. Except he wasn't making professional mm -hmm. money. But you knew you had to pay all his expenses. Oh, really? And if you could manage to arrange uh, a gathering or a collection with <laughs> ladies, <laughs> that was all part of it. Uh, Haber, well, he tell expected us about that. When, when he came, uh, how often did he play here? I know there was one tournament, one famous tournament, which you were the chairman of. It was the Julius Ross. No, that was the USHA. No. Well, yeah, yeah, that was the Julius Ross. He came. We didn't bring him in. Yes. Uh, the Y didn't bring him in. Yes. We didn't pay for his expenses. But we had a splinter group of guys yes. that were a little on the seedy side, and they kind of <laughs> liked Paul Haber. And they said, <laughs> we're bringing him in. And they paid his way. Yes. We said, great, you can pay, take care of him. Well, they had to take care of him in more than one yes. way, yes. if you know what I mean. But, yeah, he came, and he didn't win that tournament. He lost to an Irishman, really? Pat Kirby, in the finals. But Pat Kirby said, oh, yeah, this guy is... He says, I'll probably beat him because I usually beat him in a weekend yeah. tournament because he's, he's all messed up from partying, from, yeah. from doing all wouldn't, that stuff. Wouldn't he get bad hangovers and that's the time yeah. you get him? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but you know what? He never used that as an excuse really? when he got beat. And when he played in a national tournament, and I think he won six, six national really? USHA tournaments, uh, he, he, he was a little careful about he handled really? himself. Yeah. Uh, he he would he would uh, he dry out for a yeah week. he right <laughs> yeah that's what I'm saying he kind of took care of himself yes. because he would he would get so focused uh -huh. uh, he was just and when they say he was unbeatable when this guy was made up his mind he was going to go in and win uh -huh. he was going to go in and win and he did yes. he just was that good a player and he, yes. it, you couldn't really tell whether he was a righty or lefty really he was that ambidextrous really yeah he, he, he yeah. He could use both hands either way. He had yeah. such control of the game. He'd move guys all around. Yeah. He'd, he'd score points beating guys not because he was offensive, mm -hmm. hitting flat kill shots, it's because they'd make errors. Yeah. He'd just keep moving around the court until they make an error. Uh -huh. And uh, he had such court control. But he learned from the best. Paul Haber was, grew up around the stable of the best national ranked really? players. He, didn't he grow up in, like in... New York, the Bronx, or someplace. He started out living in the Chicago? Bronx. Yeah, then he then he relocated to Chicago because his father was a, a nationally ranked player. Oh, he was. And he was recruited by Bob Kendler, who was uh, probably the guru of handball. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a great player, but he had lots of cash. He had deep oh. pockets, oh. and he loved handball players, and he he, he loved to have them associated with oh. him. So he had a, a, a special facility built in Chicago called the Town Club, and he brought all these top-ranked players to work for him. Oh. But they really didn't do much work. Their work was to play handball. And uh, he, he recruited Paul Haber's father, uh -huh. Sam Haber, and uh, that's Paul came with him. And uh, Paul grew up and, you know, in, during his very formative years as a teenager watching the very best. Uh, and they were working with him. But he had a lot of problems. You yes. Know. yes. He, he, wow. He had uh, many devils in him. He certainly did. But, uh, boy, when you watched him play handball, he was, a, he was really 
something special to watch. You, you knew you were watching something special. And he was such a big deal. As I say, Sports Illustrated did a big story on him. Yep. He, all the national publications, well, even the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Chicago Tribune, of course, because yeah. he, he was living there for a while. Yep. But, he, but those of us who were maybe a little more aware, everybody that I knew, back then we were aware of him. Today, nobody remembers nobody him. Nobody remembers him. Right. He died destitute, didn't he? Yes, he did. He, he was a telemarketer. And, uh, you he, mean making calls, cold yeah, calls? Yeah, phone calls. No. Yeah, that, yeah, and you know what? He, the playing ball players of his era chipped in to get him a grave site and pay for his burial. You're kidding. Yeah, expenses. Uh, he, he had three wives, but, yes. you know, he had children, and they had nothing to do with him because he had nothing to do with them. You know, his whole life was handled. Wow. And he never really was responsible uh, to his family. And because of that, that's what happens. Uh, the only guy that gave him the telemarketer work was a guy that kind of felt sorry for him, and he was a handball player. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he gave him a place to live. Did and uh, but After all this? Yeah, yeah. He was, and he died with nothing. Nothing. Zip. Yeah, because... Uh, one of the players said, yeah, he's a great handball player, but he's unemployable. Yeah. <laughs> that was the, the quote. <laughs> unemployable. Unemployable. Because oh, whenever he was given a job, he'd mess it up. Oh, totally. He'd mess it up some way. But, but he was thrown in jail. He, he oh, served really? time in jail more than once for writing bad checks, oh. failure to pay alimony, uh, wow. things like that. And uh, it just catch it, caught up with him. <laughs> and, uh, but boy, when he came to town... I mean, we had exhibits. I'll tell you this story. <laughs> well, this group of guys that liked to see Paul Haber play, uh -huh. they were a little, you know, a little on the seedy side. Oh. They paid his way in, uh -huh. and they said, Paul Haber's going to be playing handball to JCC, Jewish Community uh, Center, yeah. I think, uh, out in Cleveland Heights, somewhere in that area. Yeah, Mayfield Road. Maybe. Yeah, that's yeah. where it is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, how many guys want to play Haber? Come on down and play him. He'll play you one game, you know. And it was like guys lined up. They go in, ba-boom, ba-boom, take care of, get you out. Next guy in. Well, on this particular trip, he brought his, his, his new wife, who he married in a handball court. She was an Irish gal, and her name was Milwaukee Mary. Okay? So he brings Milwaukee Mary, and she's up in the gallery watching him play, mm -hmm. watching go through all the guys that are uh -huh. in the Cleveland area, one game at a By time. By the way, did they have to pay to play him? No, they uh, didn't have to pay to play him, but the guys that brought him in had to pay oh, so much oh, for oh. this exhibition. Oh, okay. uh, and the other little perk that Paul got, even though his wife was up there in the gallery. <laughs> uh, they, oh, no. They, they, oh, no, I think it, I know what's coming. <laughs> they brought a gal in for him, a girlfriend for him, and and uh, he, <laughs> he he met her in the men's room. And, oh no! <laughs> and it's like you got to be kidding me. I mean, how many guys do this kind of stuff? But that was Paul Haber. And Paul tried to turn amateur handball. He tried to turn it into professional handball. I wanted to develop a pro tour. Mm -hmm. Got into trouble with Bob Kendler. Oh the guy that was constantly bailing him out, oh, really? getting him out of jail, paying lawyer really? fees, uh, doing things like that for Haber because he wanted to reform Paul. Oh. <laughs> Bob Kendler was a Christian scientist type of guy. Oh, really? and Paul was like a project for him. <laughs> and he never could get Paul to you know, come around. <laughs> In fact, it got so nasty near the end, he got really upset with Paul because Paul Haber wanted to start a pro handball uh -huh. tour and, uh, you know, said these, guys, th these top players should be getting money for, for playing mm -hmm. and, and Bob Kindler was totally against professionalism mm -hmm. and they got into it and uh, that was the end of that relationship. Oh, that's too bad. And it was over professionalism, but Kindler was, you know, he had scruples. But, you know, he, he, he was a chief enabler for Paul Haber. He allowed Haber to do all the things he was able to do and still got, got all this notoriety. But he, Paul Haber did put handball on the national map. When you, you appear in Sports Illustrated and, uh, you know, get feature articles. In fact, when he won his first national tournament, the title of the article was A Victory for Booze and Nicotine. Oh. The players didn't like him that much because... He kind of tarnished the image of the game. 
because a lot of times they, they would follow Paul Haber yeah. and, and they would have, everyone would thought that these guys were like Paul Haber and they didn't like that, you know. They didn't want everyone to stereotype them as a, oh, here's another handball bump. Yeah. 